Okay. So on, on this occasion, I'll give you a lecture on the Einar Psychic Approach, uh, the analytical, analytical Psychoanalysis by Carl Jung. And this lecture will be divided into uh, several different uh, parts uh, within the duration uh, around 10 to 20 minutes. So you can be more focused on, uh, on the section that you are interested in. And you are free to do and to finish this material at your own pace. And don't forget to uh, to, to write your short essay after um, after finishing this lecture. So um, so this topic um, is profoundly similar with uh, the classical psychoanalysis, but there are a lot of uh, deviation from the classical one. So Carl Jung was one was once a student of Sigmund Freud, but he then decided to chase uh, his own path by forming a completely different set of system of psychoanalysis. And there are lots of uh, interesting aspects that Freud would despise because Freud was very strict and he would not uh, tolerate any deviation from his own theory. And I would say that this part of psychology, there are lots of uh, controversies. Uh, there are lots of um, unscientific, I would say, because that were uh, because back then, uh, scientific uh, pro uh, scientific um, method was not very uh, developed. People just people had no idea how to conduct proper research. So there are lots of speculative idea, uh, especially Jung himself. He was very keen on the idea uh, combining psychology with, uh, with anthropology. So you would see some elements of his theory uh, is actually a combination of myths and also symbols and religions. And even though it is quite interesting to, um, very appealing yeah, to, to see, uh, to see a, completely different, a completely different a perspective in psychology but again uh, this part of psychology this is very very speculative uh, so there was no uh, robust evidence that this theory could be true so maybe you can treat this theory as a as a nice to know theory <laughs> so uh, we will start from uh, the uh, the, the very important notion, a very important characteristic of his theory, that is the admittance uh, of the importance of uh, unconscious processes. So this is very similar to what Freud says back then, what Freud said back then. So even though there are lots of uh, modification, uh, Jung basically agreed, agrees that um, well, basically, uh, personality, human personality, is formed uh, in unconscious, uh, in the unconscious area. So, uh, these unconscious processes is more profound than the conscious process. So, it's very, very important aspects of our personality that shape our personality, and this unconscious process uh, constantly seeks for a manifestation outward. And I think this is the most important. Uh, most important aspects in his theory. So even though it is unconscious, it's it, it's deeply uh, embedded in our con unconscious uh, part of our personality. It constantly seeks for uh, outward manifestation, which makes it quite problematic and causes conflicts. And this, in this part, uh, in the first part of this lecture, I'm going to give you some explanation on the energy. Uh, so from where our personality. Uh, could take shape. Um, well, it's the 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 answer would lies in the energy that we use to uh, to shape our personality, and the idea of the idea of this energy that shapes human personality is very similar to what Freud says about libidinal energy, but um, but Jung was more realistic about it by saying, by opposing Freud notion that uh, it was not primarily, so the our libidinal energy was not primarily sexual, but it's more like general 
uh, energy that gives us uh, the drives to gives us a motivation to act to shape our behavior to also um, to form our personality so um, this is the first different first deviation from the classical psychoanalysis because yeah Jung says that no of course not libido was not primarily sexual but it's more like broad and general life energy so in so libido in Jung, uh, in Jung's system has two different uh, idea so the first one it's a general energy that drives us to uh, to behave to more of a personality but the second one would be a more specific uh, psychic energy that uh, drives that fuels the for formation of our psyche so a uh, psyche itself um, is a system of personality and sometimes jung used psyche and personality uh, interchangeably so it's like quite similar yeah it's it's the way jung uh, describes human personality and there are some principles uh, so the the idea of libidinal energy they work it works in different principles because jung was a a keen student of uh, of psych uh, of the idea of um, uh, so he borrowed the idea of psychic energy so he would describe the way our psyche works uh, the, the way our psyche psychic energy works with the idea how the general energy in the nature works so he borrowed the concepts of physics yet yeah, to describe uh, how our psychic energy works uh, there are three different principles uh, that regulates how our psychic energy uh, the first principle is the principle of opposites so basically our psychic energy contains uh, the opposite energy that that um, that basically uh, contradictory to one another and it gives the psychic energy constant uh, reaction and the greater conflict between these two different tension would result in more energy so I think this is quite an interesting idea that in aligning uh, aligning our psychic energy with the general principle of energy um, was was a very interesting idea but of course we don't see we, we, we don't have the evidence that 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 would falsify or prove whether this is true or not so this again this is a very intuitive and speculative but the idea is that that is very interesting that uh, that our psychic energy was actually get there uh, they got the uh, it got it gets the energy from a constant conflicts between two different tension that pop, that opposite to one another yeah so that's the principle of opposites uh which on the other hand it will cause tense conflict but on the opposite side it will gives us the energy yeah to it will produce a greater energy and to behave and we can use it to form our psyche system and the second principle would be the principle of equivalence uh, so uh, basically it also aligned with the idea that you cannot destroy an energy uh, instead we can transform it into a different form of uh, of of an energy of another energy so uh, the the idea of uh, principle uh, the principle of equivalence is that in our psychic system in our psyche system the energy could be transferred into different form so when we so for example if we when we lose interest in one thing it means that our energy would channel into different uh, into different area that is completely different from the from the earlier one which means that our interest would be transferred into something else so or 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 other example would be if we uh, our conscious energy uh, could be it could be shifted into uh, dreams when we are asleep so so for so uh, in this uh, principle it explains that uh, our psychic energy is very dynamic 
because we could transfer it from one activities, from one interest, from one area of conciseness to other interests, to other topics, or, or to other conscious processes. And third principle would be, and this is the last principle of of the way how uh, the 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 way how our psychic energy works, is the entropy principle, and it means that again aligning with the idea, aligning with the way the general energy works, even though greater conflict would give us more energy. We have a tendency, we have a interest, we have a um, drive, uh, we also have needs to reach equilibrium state. So even though there are lots of, there are constant conflict in our inside, our psychic energy, we also strive for equilibrium and we strive for uh, maintaining the balance. Yeah. So healthy personality in Jung's, in Jung's terms is that a stable, harmonious, and balanced personality. So even though it gives us greater energy, the conflict, it would undermine our, the balance of our personality. So our duty as a human then is seeking this harmonious and balance and balancing the force of conscious and unconscious processes in our personality. So if there are two desires that completely different to each other in our psychic energy, the stronger the the energy will flow from the stronger to the weaker side of our personality. So that's why we try because we try to seek perfect balance in our psychic energy. Yeah. So as you can see that uh, the whole idea of psychic energy, the, the whole idea of personality system in Jung's term, is all about uh, uh, paradoxes and also maintaining the uh, equilibrium, which is, I think, quite interesting idea. Uh, so this is the first part of our uh, of my lecture. So again, if you have any questions that you would ask, you can use the go the Google Sheets uh, to type your answers, and I will uh, uh, to type your uh, questions, and I will uh, and you can ask questions anonymously or unanimously so whatever you choose and i will give you the answer uh, on that google sheet so i'm um, so okay so this is the end of the first section